Hey everybody, today's lesson is going to be on lens perspective. This is a very easy thing to overlook because I have a lot of students who think that lens perspective only has to do with field of view. For those of you who may not know what focal length and field of view are, focal length is typically measured in millimeters and it's often the given name of a lens. This measurement is the distance from the primary lens element to the sensor. So if you have an eight millimeter lens, what that means is, is the primary lens element is eight millimeters away from the sensor. A very, very short focal length also interprets to a very wide angle of view, also called field of view. So if you have a short focal length, you're going to be able to see a ton of the background. And if you have a great focal length, such as 200 or 400 millimeters, you are going to have a very narrow field of view. And that's what telephoto lenses do, is they get us very close to our subject. Many lenses have zoom capability in that they're able to change their focal length from maybe 70 millimeters to 200 millimeters. They're able to move that primary lens element and change their field of view. Now I hate to say this, but for the most part, beginning photographers only understand this concept that when you have very short focal lengths, you have a very wide field of view. And when you have longer focal lengths, you have a very narrow field of view. And that's about where they leave it. But there is much more to lens perspective than just field of view. And I wanted to demonstrate this with a series of example images. In this first example, I went to the park with my friend Annie and I had her stand in front of this green building. Now, it's very important to remember that Annie is not moving. And what I decided to do was take a picture of Annie using different focal length lenses and each time I would step back and zoom in a little bit more and then step back and zoom in a little bit more and I'm trying to keep Annie to be about the same size in each image. What I want you to pay particular attention to is the doors on the green building. And what you're going to notice is that as I back up and zoom in, those doors appear larger and closer. And again, Annie and the building are not moving. They are stationary. So when we look at this first example, we can gain some very valuable information in that very, very wide focal length lenses are going to make the background appear smaller and further away. Telephoto lenses have a tendency to make background subjects appear larger and closer to foreground subjects. Now, some of you are probably wondering, why in the world does this happen? It's an optical effect based on how lenses work. When we have a very, very wide field of view, more of the background is going to fit into the image. When we have a very, very narrow field of view, less of the background is going to fit in the image and the optical effect is that it is magnified and it appears closer. It's not closer, it appears closer. This is a very valuable tool if you have a secondary subject. In the second example, I want you to take a look at this chess set that I took pictures of in my driveway. Pay particular attention to the parallel edges. When I shoot with a very, very wide field of view or short focal length, the side edges converge into the background. They do not appear parallel. As I back up and zoom in, and back up and zoom in, two interesting things happen. Number one, the side edges of the chess set become more and more parallel. And the second thing is that the back edge seems to grow and seems to get larger. And by the time we get to 400 millimeters, it appears that it's almost longer than the front edge. So that is another very important tool when you are considering depth of a subject. If you're taking a picture of a hallway or inside of a building, or maybe a product, if you want to project this feeling of depth, you would want to use a wide angle lens. If you want the subject to appear a little less deep or a little less 
uh, round or convergent, you would want to use a telephoto lens. Now one problem with shooting the chess set was that as I backed up, my angle approaching the chess set changed. So I decided to repeat the experiment only using two chess pieces, a black queen and a white queen. And I spaced them about 10 inches apart. And again, I repeated the experiment, only this time shooting from eye level. On shorter focal length or wide field of view lenses, you'll notice that the black chess piece is much smaller than the white chess piece. But again, as I back up and zoom in, the background subject seems to magically grow, and by the time I get to 400 millimeters, they appear to be almost the same size. So that is a very important tool when you are considering a secondary background subject. If you need to make it appear larger, use a more uh, telephoto zoom lens. Now in this last example, I have to point this out simply because I'm a portrait photographer and I take lots of pictures of people. I think more and more people are using cell phones and iPhones to take portraits and the equivalent focal length of, of an iPhone is about 32 to 35 millimeters depending on which version of the iPhone you have. And it's similar for all smart, smartphones and cell phones. The problem with using very wide field of view lenses for portraitures is that we run the risk of unflattering distortion. And I'm gonna exaggerate a little bit and come back to this picture of Annie taken at eight millimeters. If you take a look at her nose and her eyes, they are disproportionately larger than the rest of her head. Now when we go up to the greater focal length, such as 16 or 24, of course this is going to be reduced, but to the untrained eye, it is perceived as a little less flattering. So if you take lots of pictures of people using a 15 millimeter or a 30 millimeter lens, the chances are their nose may be a little bit larger proportionately than it is in real life. And so when we take a look at Annie's nose when we shoot with a 200 or a 400 millimeter lens, you're gonna notice a bunch of things. Her nose is smaller and her body even appears to be a little bit thinner. And this is a very good thing when you're taking pictures of people. You want to make them look flattering. Now this is a very easy thing to miss and it depends on, on what you're doing and how you're shooting and even where they're standing in your composition. But for the most part, I'm gonna say you're going to be pretty safe once you get over 50 or, or 70 millimeters. It's a lot harder to pick up. I know photographers who will not shoot people unless it's over 85 millimeters. Just know that if you're using a very wide angle lens, you run the risk of making their nose uh, and their eyes look a little bit bigger, almost cartoonish, and that's a little unflattering. So to summarize, lens perspectives have so much more to do than just with field of view. If you're using a very wide focal length lens, your secondary background subjects are going to appear much smaller and much further away than anything in the foreground. Leading lines, products, hallways, buildings are going to have much more depth with a wide angle lens. If you're using a telephoto lens, your background secondary subjects are going to appear much larger and much closer. It's also great to give a very flattering look to your model or whoever you're taking a picture of. So any event, that is your lesson on lens perspectives more than meets the eye. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. If you found this video helpful, you may be interested in my new DVD, Lighting Crash Course, where I will teach you one of the most effective, comprehensive courses on portrait and product lighting available anywhere. You can order it from the following link.